Howdy guys, IAQ Josh here in lovely Deerfield Beach, Florida. Today I'm gonna be taking you on a show and tell of a property that my mold remediation company is working on uh, that has suffered from some exterior water intrusion, much of which is from stucco cracks, uh, damage to fascia boards, things of that nature. So I just wanna kinda share with you guys some information on how you could prevent water damages like this within your own property. So let's get to it. All right, guys, so let's start out taking a look here at this uh, side entrance pedestrian door into this, this garage. Um, what you'll see, it's pretty self-explanatory. Probably don't need to explain much about it, but we've got quite a bit of talking metal here. Um, this metal's just ready to go. The corrosion's already there. Uh, all this exposure to rainfall over the years has definitely taken a toll on this door. There's not much to say about this other than when you see something like this in your home, you wanna proactively and promptly address this. Usually the remedy is just replacing the door. If you can catch it early on enough, and maybe in addition to the overhang that you have above there, maybe put something above the door to deflect some of the rainfall, uh, that's a possibility. More often than not, just getting a fiberglass door may be beneficial in preventing a lot of this otherwise would be uh, rot that you would see to wood, or in this case, corrosion that you would see to metal. All right, so now let's take a look at the base of this wall. What you're gonna notice down here is we have a lot of areas where this paint has actually come off. You can see, in fact, that it's chipping relatively easily. Um, this tells us a number of things. Number one, we can't rule out the possibility that this wall wasn't primed correctly, and as a result, we've got the paint flaking off of it. But more often than not, especially when you're talking down low at the grade level, simply put, it could just be a matter of moisture or water accumulation against the side of the home. Anytime you have water sitting against the side of your home for a prolonged period of time, it's subject to just basically capillary action. Moisture wicking in underneath here, getting behind the paint surface itself, and all this wet block, this concrete blocks that you would have here, ultimately, wet goes to dry, so that moisture wants to jump out of the wall, and essentially it goes to the path, of the path of least resistance, which a lot of times is creating blistering and bubbling paint, and ultimately you end up with situations like this. So, one of the easiest remedies for this is the next time you're going through and you're up for your five year, 10 year painting of the exterior of the home, take a look at the grading level, see if there's any exterior waterproofing you need to do, potentially install some French drains on the sides of your home if you know that those areas are subject to flooding with heavy downpours. Ultimately, addressing this could prevent that water from one day wicking its way inside of your home. Moving right along, let's take a look at something that is a bit more common, at least what we run into within the remediation industry, is these stucco or stair cracks that you have here. And if you essentially just kind of follow my finger, you're gonna notice that this pattern will run right along here and then ultimately it'll drop down and then continue on here. And that's kind of where these type of cracks got that name as that stair crack, right? It just looks like a staircase as it goes down. And the reason for this is because you have concrete blocks that are stacked on one another and essentially offset. So then what happens is as the uh, the cement lines, right? The mortar bed between these concrete blocks, as it starts to crack away, then what you get is you get those lines that start to do this. And to no coincidence, it follows the line of the mortar bed between the block. So one of the easiest things that you can do with this, well, the absolute easiest, if the cracks are minor, would be to uh, hire a, a painting company have them come out, you know, properly prime the walls, things of that sort, and then apply what's known as an elastomeric paint. And just as the name implies, the elastic properties of it will allow it to flex. And when it is able to flex like that, we're not gonna see these cracks start to break through. However, some other alternatives that you can do if you're not necessarily in the market to paint your entire home is these cracks could be grinded out. The reason you wanna grind them out is to make sure that the gap is wide enough to actually accept some compound to actually go inside of it 
and address that crack, right? So what you would do is you would grind these cracks out and then you would fill it with some sort of either a hydraulic cement or ideally something that has a little more flexible properties. They make a lot of uh, mortar caulks and things of that sort. Um, one of the best things you can do would probably go directly to either a waterproofing company, potentially a stucco repair company, and something like this is relatively inexpensive when it comes to the interior water that would otherwise come through when these cracks see a lot of rain. That rain just comes right down the wall. And again, path of least resistance, it hits this crack and it wants to turn in and go inside. So do not fall victim to that. Make sure you start to see these things. You see them a lot around windows and things of that sort. Call a professional, have them come out, evaluate your home. Most companies don't charge for a complimentary estimate nowadays. All right guys, so now let's take a look at one of the more costly repairs that you would suffer as a property owner, which is gonna be window repair, but more than likely window replacement when you start getting to these older Jolicy windows. Um, not a lot of guys and gals out there are repairing these windows nowadays, and I'm gonna show you exactly why. One of the reasons is you have these plastic uh, window glazing beads. I, I believe that's what they're called. And this plastic, sometimes it's metal, but a lot of times it's plastic. This becomes very brittle over time. And then, I don't know if you can really see it, but you can definitely hear the brittleness to it. And what'll happen is this will start to crack. And this typically happens because again, you're talking 20, 30, 40, 50 plus years of this window sitting in this here sun. And then what happens is it just, it just starts to dry rot for lack of a better word, right? The, the plastic just becomes very brittle from sitting in the sun day in and day out, and then you start to have cracks here. And then the biggest problem with having cracks here is when you don't have this glazing material right here, keeping the water off of this window seam, then you have water that can run right down in here and potentially get behind that glass if let's say there was a break in the adhesive and you had enough water that was actually running under there. Another thing that is super, super common is we will actually see these cracks right here. A lot of times it's either gonna be in the stucco, right along a window, or you're gonna actually see it in the caulk line itself, right? So then looking down here, this right here is, is pretty bad as far as what I've seen. You can actually see where the caulking, I mean, this right here is definitely caulking and then it's even the paint layer that's underneath it. All of that is really starting to break away. So this unfortunately, and we did confirm this, this water, excuse me, this window is definitely letting a lot of water in. So gotta pay attention to these. If you've had windows on your home since the beginning of time and they're looking like this and they're older Jolicy windows, it's probably time to start getting some quotes on window replacement. At the very least, take a look at the windows themselves, inspect for cracks and breaks around them as well as brittle materials that could potentially let water in down the road. It's easier to deal with these things from the exterior of the home than being displaced by having to take out walls in the interior. Best thing you can do is maintain these windows, be proactive on it when they start to look like they're getting up there in age and the jealousy mechanism's not working too well. Um, potentially if you're seeing water come in and go on the windowsill, these are clear cut signs that you should address this ASAP. Okay, so now actually on the other side of the home, you can see Right behind me to my left here, we've got a standard coaxial cable. Uh, this is gonna be your typical cable, TV cable, cable internet, any of the above. But what is not typical is this actual hole here. That's a pretty large hole for such a small cable. And don't get me wrong, the hole was probably made that large to more easily slide that cable into the home. However, this area right here at the very least should have been caulked just to make sure that no moisture can actually follow this cable into the home. Again, anywhere we have penetrations, anywhere we have hope, or excuse me, openings, um, whether it's a hose rack mounted to the side of the house, uh, whether it's a hose bib that's been semi-recently replaced and they you know, just left an opening around it, water will find its way in. So when we have things as simple, or that seem as simple as putting some caulking in and around a coaxial cable, just do it. All right, so moving along the side of the home up toward the front of the home, uh, right here you're gonna see that we've got a knee wall. And what this is is, this is 
going to be purely cosmetic. Uh, this is for aesthetic purposes only. Um, and unfortunately, as the structure starts to get up there in age, what you're going to notice is you will actually see, not always, but a lot of times, this here structure, especially if it's not tied in and fastened properly, it's just going to essentially start to pull away from the wall. And you can actually see, you may be able to see, it's not as easy as it looks, but this wall, this knee wall, has quite a bit of play there. So you can do a couple of things when you run into these situations. The first and obvious approach is going to be simply to repair that crack, right? To hire a stucco contractor to come in and tie that back in. The problem is, is because more than likely this wasn't installed correctly, it doesn't have the uh, proper rebar, for lack of a better word, or some other fastener tie in to the structure of the home, this is probably, not even potentially, probably going to happen again. So when you have an older property and you have these knee walls and you see it start to already pull away, um, your best bet is probably going to be something as simple as taking a sledgehammer to it. Now, that said, you know, proceed with due caution here. You probably want to hire a professional. You probably also want to make sure, as ridiculous as it may seem, that no electrical or plumbing lines run through there. And albeit this wall is just kind of out there in the middle of nowhere without a hose bib or anything, of course, last thing you want to do is cause, you know, thousands of dollars of uh, secondary damages because we didn't know something was in that wall. Okay, so squeezed into this bush, as you can see all around me with this lovely spider web, which I'm sure you won't see up here. But one thing I wanted to show you guys, and I'll bring the camera on in here, is going to be this rotting fascia board. So we've got this wooden material that actually is a trim piece that goes all the way up and around the window. Uh, there's also a matching portion that goes over the garage. Again, purely aesthetics here. However, when you start to get up there in age and you start to see all this corrosion as well as, I'm not a termite expert, but I don't doubt that there's probably some channeling going on from termites, uh, things of that sort. And what's happening is this thing is just basically a big sponge. So all the water that's gonna be hitting this window when it rains, cause there's not much of an overhang up there, uh, about the same thing as the side of the home, about two feet in general. And um, ultimately that water's gonna get right in here and anywhere that there were metal fasteners into this uh, concrete block home, that are starting to rot away and rust because that's what happens to metal when it's exposed to water over a great period of time. Now what we've got is we've got water just rushing into this property. It's not even just like little drips. It is like when we have a wild South Florida rainy afternoon, that water just rushes in here. So something needs to be dealt with when you have these again, uh, you can go through the maintaining, let's get out of the bush here, you can go through the maintaining process, or simply put, what we're gonna be doing here, what the homeowner is gonna be doing, is we're gonna have all of this fascia board removed. So anywhere that you see this fascia board in the background, this is all gonna be removed, it's going to be repaired and replaced with matching stucco. So this whole front part of this home is gonna get a facelift, this thing is going to look like it hasn't looked in years, and ultimately, and most importantly, it's going to be waterproof. All right guys, so now let's show you the interior of the home and uh, some of the water damage that has occurred as a result of the exterior defects, if you will. So we're gonna actually walk through one of our designated work areas behind this zippered entry. Let's squeeze on in, get this puppy zipped back up. Raise that selfie stick nice and high. And let's take you on a quick show and tell. Over this shoulder here is a HEPA air scrubber, also known as an air filtration device. This little gem right here is gonna be a conventional dehumidifier. What this guy does is this regulates the relative humidity in here, allowing us to stay beneath 60% and reduce the potential for continued mold growth, at least while we're here working. This air filtration device here does just that. It filters the air, reduces the particle load while we have team members here working, as well as continues to filter even after the work is done. In this case, we're not complete. We know we still have an exterior wall that's leaking. Nonetheless, I thought I would show you guys how much drywall had to come out of this room as a result of the exterior having leaks and allowing for water to come inside, right? So this was a carpeted bedroom. All of the carpet was removed. All of the tack strips were removed. That's the wooden strips with those little nails 
that come up that you always seem to stab your finger on if you're in the construction business. Um, nonetheless, uh, let's show you. So we've got the, this wall right here, I guess general disclaimer, this white paint, this is, this is not us. Um, this was done probably at some point, I don't know when, but this predated us. The second we opened up this wall, we had this white paint, which I can only uh, assume is probably a molding capsulate of some kind. Hopefully it's not just like a kills primer or anything. Nonetheless, um, we have the tape here. This tape is to seal off the interstitial or cavity space from the remediated section that my team has worked so vigorously on. Um, a final step here is once this exterior is done and is repaired, then we can come through and do a final cleaning of this entire space. All right, guys, so that was definitely a fun video to shoot. Uh, as you can see, this home definitely is in need of some TLC. Fortunately, my mold remediation company is on site working in conjunction with a exterior waterproofing company. Uh, this property should be wrapping up within about the next week. We can get in, we can perform our final cleaning. Per usual, if you guys found any value here, I would love that motivational thumbs up like button. Uh, if you want to subscribe to my channel, that's awesome. Love my subscribers. Love my non-subscribers too, but you know, gotta love the subscribers more. And um, most importantly, if there's anybody that you think can see some value in this video that is potentially going through an exterior remodel, uh, maybe you've just been over their house for a barbecue and noticed that there's a massive exterior crack, because we all look at for those, right? Yeah, yeah, that goes on. Uh, definitely share this video with them. But as always, I love making these videos. I'm gonna continue to make the videos. So. I will see you guys on the flip side.